Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and of course this is Shackleton the Explorer. The Arctic is, is in dire straits right now. Vast um, portions of the Arctic are burning. There's um, lots of warmer temperatures up in the Arctic. There's incursions of storms getting up there because the jet streams are extremely wavy. The ridges are going high up into the Arctic. Europe just suffered um, its second major heat wave of the summer and it, that was a result of Sahara desert air crossing the Mediterranean, getting humid, gaining moisture, and then going over into Europe, creating very, very high temperatures combined with very, very high humidity. Very, very uncomfortable for people there. You know, life-threatening in many cases. Lots of people don't have air conditioning. In fact, there's only 5% penetration of air conditioning in France and about 1% in Germany. So most people don't have air conditioning in their residences. Then that hot air from Europe continued northward over and, and ends up, ended up over Greenland, where it is now, bringing extremely high temperatures there. So the jet streams are completely distorted and broken, as you know, because the, uh, Ar the Arctic is warming much faster than the rest of the planet. The Arctic is becoming a much darker place in fact, I've often quoted the number that the reflectivity of the overall Arctic used to be 52%. That was in 1979. And in 2011, it was measured to be 48%, which is a significant drop in the um, albedo or reflectivity, making the Arctic a much darker place, meaning it absorbs much more solar radiation in the summers. The reason for this darkening is multifold. But the main reasons are the loss of Arctic sea ice in the summers and in all of the other months and the loss of snow cover over the land in the spring months, most notably in June. But also, we're getting lots of fires up in the north. We're getting wildfires, which are destroying carbon sources, or carbon sinks rather, the permafrost, the tundra, where carbon's been stored for hundreds of thousands of years. And we're also, the ash from these fires is encoding the ice and darkening it. You know, as the sea ice is melting, for example, melt ponds are darkening it. So in this video, I'm going to talk all about albedo effects. You know, how the albedo is dropping. I'll show you the data from NASA, and it needs to be updated in a big way. I'll talk about feedbacks um, that are going on in the Arctic. I'll talk about the, Im the impact of clouds. It turns out that in regions where the sea ice has declined or disappeared on the edges, there's a lot more cloud cover. In fact, the, uh, as the sea ice goes, the clouds tend to occupy about 81% of the sky. And this somewhat mitigates the darkening effect from the loss of sea ice, but not, not completely. Um, so, it, but it's a very important factor. So I'll talk about that and um, I'll show you how you can actually look and see where those fires are burning yourself. But first of all, we have, uh, we want to do a little experiment here. Do you care? Shackleton the Explorer is a very cool cat. He knows he knows this is not a real shark. I just that's too bad. Okay. Anyway, it's very, very hot day, so he's not moving very quickly. And no, I don't have uh air conditioning. I use fans. A lot of people ask me that question when I did my air conditioning videos. Okay, so let's get right into it here. Into the fun stuff. So this was my last post. I talked all about the uh, sea ice death spiral. I also made a visit to Toronto and I was near the airport. So I thought a ah, perfect time to do a video on global aviation and climate change. So you can see all that in my last post. Had a wonderful, wonderfully interesting and entertaining uh, session with, um, with uh, Sandy. Okay, um, Sandy Shoals, 
um, on, on uh, you know, Facebook live feed. Check it out if you haven't. So I tweeted some recent things. This is my channel at Paul H. Beckwith. So I tweeted a number of things about how a complete loss of Arctic sea ice will really be a tipping point for our climate system to a place that we do not want to go. The loss of sea ice is the equivalent of increasing um, global emissions by about a, a gigaton of CO2. You know, at the present rate of emissions of 40 gigatons of CO2 per year, it takes 25 years to, to put out a, um, uh, a, a trillion tons of, of CO2. So that would set us back basically 25 years from target. So I'll talk about that. Um, this is some NASA data, um, measure, how we measure the Earth's albedo and the overall albedo of the Arctic declining from 52% in 1979 to 48% in 2011. So I give the links and show those sources. I'll also talk a lot about the peat fires and you know what that means. I mean, the, these uh, climate feedbacks are accelerating and becoming very scary for, for us. Okay, so this is the NASA site, NASA Satellite Sea Arctic Surface Darkening Faster. So if you just Google that, this was in 2014. So the, basically the retreat of sea ice in the Arctic Ocean is diminishing Earth's albedo or reflectivity by an amount considerably larger than previously estimated according to this study that was done back in this time frame. So basically uh, they use this series instrument um, and what it stands for is series, it stands for Clouds and Earth's Radiant Energy System. Okay, there were instruments on various satellite missions and the first series instrument was launched in December of 97 and they've been launched ever since but they're replacing that with some updated satellites soon. So when the sea ice melts, the white reflective surface is replaced by a relatively dark ocean surface. So this makes the overall Arctic darker, so it absorbs more solar energy, so it heats up more. Okay, um, the Arctic is warm, remember this is in 2014, so the Arctic warmed by basically 2C or 3.6 Fahrenheit since the 1970s relative to 2014. The summer minimum Arctic sea ice extent decreased by 40% by that, on that time frame. So what, these, um, what this study did, did, you know, basically a perfectly black surface has an albedo of 0%. It absorbs all solar energy. A perfectly white surface has an albedo of 100%. It reflects all energy. I often ask um, my students, you know, what's the albedo of your bathroom mirror? You know, and it's aluminum on glass, on the back of the glass, reflects about 98% of the incoming light. So that would be the albedo. Fresh snow, the albedo is about 80 to 90%. The ocean surface, less than 20%. Greatly depends on the angle of the incident light. If the angle is normal, coming straight down onto the surface, then the albedo is um, more like, uh, you know, it's under 10%. Clouds and other factors, of course, aerosols, black carbon, influence the albedo of the Earth. So the researchers in this study calculated that the overall albedo of the Arctic region fell from 52% to 48% between 7, 1979 and 2011. This number that they found is twice as large as what previous studies indicated. And they compared the results to model simulations to see how the computer models would would do. Um, and basically, you know, it's intuitive that replacing white reflective sea ice with dark ocean surface would increase the amount of solar heating, but they use satellite measurements of both albedo and sea ice to verify this and to see how much extra heat the region was absorbing due to ice loss. And the two data sets uh, agreed with each other. So this was, uh, you know, this was very important um, study, okay? Um, but I would like to see, you know, I looked for more recent data, more recent studies to see whether, you know, that 48%, that 52% down to 48%, you know, what's happened since 2011? Is it 46? Is it 44? And I could, I came up with the blank. I couldn't find too much. 
Okay, so this is a very useful study. Have a look at yourself. And if you find anything more recent, then please let me know and I'll do a, 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 a new video on it. Now, how do we measure the Earth's albedo? Okay, so this is a measurement of the Earth. This is showing the Earth's albedo. This is from March 1st, 2000 to December 31st, 2011. The change in reflectivity as a percent um, on the Earth's surface. So as you go to the blue, the reflectivity is increasing. As you go to the brown, the reflectivity is decreasing. So the key thing is look at the entire Arctic region here. The reflectivity is declining all over the sea ice as the sea ice melts out and becomes thinner. It's reflecting less light. Um, when you get melt ponds on it, it's reflecting less light, absorbing more light and so on. So the, especially at the edges where the ice is, is retreating most quickly, the change in reflectivity is, is the largest. Um, and, but you can see the entire Arctic region um, is getting darker. Antarctica, the uh, West Antarctic side is getting darker, but not the whole continent. Okay, some areas, you know, the blue areas here are getting higher reflectivity. Okay, sea ice was growing uh, up, you know, when, when this study was done, sea ice was still growing. So around the uh, Antarctica, there's the reflectivity was increasing, but now sea ice is plummeting around Antarctica. So this will be the albedo is decreasing rapidly, you know, as the sea ice is replaced by um, dark ocean water. Okay, so this, uh, this is data showing what we, you know, what is intuitive and what we know. This is the overall planet now. So again, the Arctic is getting a lot darker. Some areas here are getting darker. Um, other areas here um, are getting more reflective. So for example, you know, if we lose vegetation, there's heat waves in Australia. If we lose vegetation, then things all dry out. There's a lot more sand and sand exposed. And if the, the albedo of the or reflectivity of the surface is exceeds that of the vegetation, which is likely, then we can get, uh, you know, uh, um, we can get uh, higher albedo. You know, if depending on the nature of the clouds and the storms, I mean, you can try to explain, you know, why things are happening in different regions. One thing here is this area here is getting darker. Um, I think we were switching from a El Nino to a La Nina. So the hotter areas, there was more water vapor, more evaporation over on the western part of the Pacific, making the albedo decrease. Okay. Um, getting darker basically because there was more water vapor, more water droplets in the air, more absorption of the incoming sunlight, making the albedo darker in those regions. I mean, you can try to look at the whole map and try to explain things. But of course, you know, sunlight's the primary driver of Earth's weather and climate. Roughly 340 watts per square meter of energy from the sun reach the Earth. About one third of that energy is reflected back into space and the remaining 240 watts per square meter is absorbed by land, ocean, and atmosphere. Exactly how much sunlight is absorbed depends on the reflectivity of the atmosphere and the surface, right? And the reflectivity of the atmosphere will depend on the amount of clouds and the surface, of course, the albedo, um, you know, whether it's, whether it's ice on the surface or open water or whatever. So basically for, um, for 17 years, scientists have been, and remember, you know, this was basically, um, this was a 2011 study and it was published in, you know, the data was, um, you know, in 2014 it came out. Um, but basically we've got this, the clouds and earth radiant system, radiant energy system or series. And, and these instruments use scanning radiometers to measure both the short wave solar energy reflected from the planet albedo and the long wave thermal energy emitted by it. The first series went in space in 97. Three more have gone up and the last remaining one was going to fly on a satellite here and there's going to be a radiation budget instrument to cover to keep going. Now if Earth was completely covered with ice, its albedo would be 0 0.84, meaning it would reflect 84 percent of the sunlight that hit it. That would keep it cold. If it was covered by a dark green forest canopy, the albedo would be 0 0.14. Okay, so I'll continue this video. Thank you for listening.